Hi, everybody. My name is Justine Frolker, and I'm a butterfly farmer. And I have three videos to teach you about the monarch butterfly. And I encourage you in the comments below of all three videos, have your parent or your parental figure or whoever the adult is in your home help you to type up any questions that you have, put your name, your age, and where you're from. And I will be going live on Friday to answer your questions live um, on Facebook. So all that information is down below in the description of this video. So again, my name's Justine and I am a butterfly farmer. I raise monarch butterflies and also swallowtails. I might do an extra video for you on swallowtails. They're, they're pretty interesting too, but I have a lot of information for you on monarch butterflies. I have raised monarch butterflies for four summers and we usually, my husband Chad and I and our three little dogs, we usually release about uh, probably like 200 to 300 monarchs every single season. So first off to tell you a little bit about the monarch butterfly. So these are my pictures. So the monarch butterfly is one of the only butterflies that migrates. And what happens, what that means is that they fly a really long distance based on the seasons. So in the summer months, they are usually up north, like in Canada, and then they'll fly through down south through the United States, and they will hibernate in the winter months in some parts of California, but mostly in Mexico. So these two pictures are actually clusters of monarchs on trees in December in California. So a lot of times, the, like the one picture is taken through a telescope. So they look like dead leaves because that helps keep them safe from their predators. But they huddle together in these big clusters so that they look for leaves, like look, look, they look like leaves and they keep warm throughout the winter months. And then when the sun comes out, they'll warm up and they'll go feed in the, on the ground in water and maybe some flowers if there's some flowers there, but they're gonna hibernate all winter long before they start making their big migration trek when, this, when the months start um, warming up in the spring. And so then that's what we call the butterfly migration. So I live in St. Louis, Missouri, which is right along the Monarch Highway, which is why I, I help the monarchs because we've lost 90% of the monarch population in the last 25 years for multiple reasons, which we'll talk about. And so what that basically means is that monarch butterflies are really close to being endangered. The monarch butterfly is the only butterfly that makes a two-way migration. They fly 3,000 miles, Canada to Mexico. It's pretty amazing. And sometimes you can see them on radars, not super often, but like we, I watch a map every year to see how far there are. Like right now, we're film, I'm filming this in March, and they have started to leave Mexico, and they're now up in Texas making their way up to us here in St. Louis. So that's how, that's how they migrate up to the warmer months to seek milkweed and flowers to feed on and to make babies. So here's a video actually of, it's really hard because it was in, it was in the telescope. So it's really hard to get. This is me filming, but can you see them? So they're all clustered together to stay really warm during the winter months. Or one day when I get to go to Mexico, I'm super excited. I will hopefully get to see this. This is in Mexico. Look at all those butterflies. Isn't there everywhere? So this is in the middle of the day where it's a little bit warmer. So they come down from their clusters to mate, to make babies, and to feed on groundwater um, and mostly stay safe and healthy on groundwater and the minerals that are in groundwater. Okay, so this is a little trivia for you. So how do monarchs smell, taste, and eat? So actually monarch butterflies, they can smell nectar with their antenna that are off of the top of their head, and they can smell nectar from miles and miles up in the air as they're flying on that monarch highway, as we call it, which is just the path from Mexico to, to um, Canada, and they smell with their antenna, and then that's when they know, ooh, someone has a garden, with milkweed in it or with flowers that I can feed on so that I have enough fuel to keep flying. And then once they kind of get down into your garden, they actually land on a plant and they taste with their feet. That's how they know that there's nectar nearby. And then they eat with their proboscis, which their proboscis, and I'll show you in a picture in a little while, is a long, 
looks like a straw. So monarchs, butterflies don't have mouths. They can't bite you. They can't. They do have little tiny, tiny claws on their feet, but you might just feel a little like, not even a pinch, but their mouths are straws. And it's actually two chambers of a straw that they knit together and that's how they eat. They suck nectar out of the center of a flower so that they have enough fuel to keep flying. So there you go. There, I don't know if, hopefully you can see this. There's a, this is their proboscis. See, it looks like a long straw and this butterfly is putting it into the middle. This is a milkweed plant into the middle of a flower. Milkweed, it's technically a weed, but it smells so good. It's so pretty and they get so big. So it eats nectar out of this proboscis that is this long straw coming out of its head, basically. That's its mouth. No teeth, can't bite you, I promise. Here is a picture. This is me holding monarchs that I raised one summer. So here on the left is a female monarch and here on the right is a male monarch and you can tell the difference the biggest difference is these two little dots on the lower wings of the male butterfly there are pheromone packets or pockets basically so they they release kind of scents so that females and males can know that it's a boy butterfly so, so sometimes those boy butterflies they fight a lot in my garden because they want to claim their flower and they'll like flutter around and just fight because they smell each other based off of these these pheromone pockets basically on their wings. Another way that you can also tell the difference between a male and a female monarch is that males do tend to be smaller and females tend to be a little bit brighter orange and also you can see really good in this picture her veins, see on this female, her veins are thicker. So they're dark black and they're thicker than the male monarch. The male monarch, the veins in the in the leaf or in the leaf and the wing are not as thick. All right, so mama monarch boy and girl monarch mates and mama and she becomes a mama monarch and what that means is she's going to lay eggs on the bottom of milkweed leaves and she lays 300 to 500 eggs she's a busy busy mom very very busy mom and here's a picture of her so she tucks her tail underneath the leaf to lay the egg and it sticks almost like a little glue. The egg sticks on the bottom of the leaf to keep it safe from predators. And here's a little video that I caught. It's really hard to see. Baby. There's a baby, she just laid one. They fly so fast. There she tucks her little body right, right there. there she laid. Just laid a little egg right there. So she flies around on, the, on milkweed leaves to lay eggs to keep them safe from predators. And there is an egg. So you can see, this is actually a tip of a pin up here in the, the top right of the screen. That's how tiny an egg is. It's little itty bitty and it's white and it almost looks like a diamond. It shines with the different facets in it. So that's a really close up picture of the egg. There's a kind of another picture. You can see it right underneath this leaf is the monarch egg. So every day as a monarch farmer, Every day during the season, I go outside in the morning and I look under all my monarch or my milkweed leaves to find eggs. And then I actually bring them inside to keep them safe from predators. So what happens is in three to five days after she has laid that egg, a tiny monarch larva or a little itty bitty 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 caterpillar comes out of that egg. And we call that hatching. It hatches out of the egg. And that is what it looks like right before it hatches. So you can see that white egg has turned black because that is the head of the caterpillar. And if you can look really closely, you can see those little specks towards the bottom of the egg. Those are the little tiny hairs on the monarch caterpillar, on the baby, on the larva technically. And then there she is, or he, I don't know if it's a boy or girl at this point, but here is the tiny itty bitty monarch larva who is, comes out, it hatches out of that egg three to five days after being laid. And it is about the size of the tip of a brand new crayon. That's how tiny it is, to give you a little bit perspective. So why do I love monarchs so much? So I love monarchs so much because they are endangered. We've lost 90% of their population due to multiple things, okay? I also help the monarchs because by bringing them inside, I keep them safe from all of their predators to help increase their numbers. So in the wild, when a mama monarch lays an egg, only about one to five out of every 100 eggs she lays makes it to a full grown butterfly because of all of the predators that they have. But when I bring them inside, 
I, I have a much better rate of keeping them healthy and releasing them back into the wild. Really about, eight, I, I get about 80% out of the ones that I bring inside, I release as healthy monarchs. So I help them because they are endangered. I also help them because they are pollinators, which basically means that they take, they take pollen from flowers, just like bees are really important, and they, they cross-pollinate different flowers and that helps with our nature, with our earth and with our food. So pollinators are really important in, in nature and also for our food supply when it comes to honeybees and bees. And then also I love monarchs because they're beautiful and resilient. They're so pretty. I used to see a lot of them when I was young. And as you're gonna learn over these videos, they go through a lot. And I think that they are a sign to help us remember that even when life gets really tough or dark or it hurts, that it will be okay. And so that's why I love monarchs so much. So I would love to hear why you love monarchs so much. So comment below and ask me a question. And then finally, your question of the day. I'll answer it in the next video. What do monarch caterpillars eat that make them poisonous to their predators? And then also my second question, what are monarchs biggest predators? Do you know what they are? And I'm gonna cover that in video too. So remember, I'm gonna go live on Friday. The information is down below for, and I'll read your questions live on Facebook. So below, have the adult who is with you help you type in your name, your age, and where you're from, and what your question is about the monarch butterfly. And then the next video, we're gonna talk about caterpillars. I love caterpillars. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.